Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, looking in the eighth month and talking about the events of the month of Bull. Now, we're looking at a calendar here for the year 2022, and we're going to use it as a backdrop. But in this video, we're going to focus more on the events of the eighth month, particularly that what you see down there on the 15th day of the eighth month and how it could be the reason why we don't see the tribe of Dan mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapter seven. So we'll be talking about that. But before we get into it, let's look closely at this month here, the eighth month in the year 2022. We had the sighting of the new moon visualized and confirmed back there on October the 26th at sunset that marked the beginning of the month. And since it fell on Wednesday evening, that means that the Sabbath days for the month will start on Wednesday evenings and will last until sunset on Thursdays until we have another new moon, which we should see somewhere around November the 22nd. And then, as you know, the Sabbath days will change to a Friday, but it'll more likely be a Saturday. We'll have to wait to get the verification of the new moon before we will know for sure. That's one of the main problems with the sacred calendar as far as secular society is concerned. We can't produce calendars out into the future like they do with their Gregorian calendars because we always have to wait on the sighting of the moon. The other problem is that our Sabbath days change every month. That's why so many people are so quick to discount the sacred calendar and only go by the government issued calendars. But anyway, there are two times in the scripture that the eighth month is mentioned, which don't include a particular day of the month. Those are coming out of first Kings in chapter six. And the other one is in Zechariah chapter one. We'll come back to the mention of the one in first Kings because it gives us a particular day, the 15th day of the eighth month. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video because it's going to get real interesting as we start talking about the tribe of Dan. Like I said, why they are missing from Revelation chapter seven. Many people have asked that question. I believe we're going to answer it here in this video. But before we do, let's come over and let's look at first Kings chapter six, where in verse 38, it says, and in the 11th year in the month bull, which is the eighth month was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof, according to all the fashion of it. So was he seven years in the building. This is talking about King Solomon building the first temple. And what we note here is how after seven years, that first temple was actually finished in the eighth month. You see here it being called bull or ball. When we look at the concordance for the word ball, we see that it actually has three letters. So the proper pronunciation should have three syllables instead of just one. Looking at the Paleo Hebrew, we can tell that those letters correspond with the Beth, the Wad, and the Lamed. So the proper pronunciation will be more like Bawala or Bawala. And we can see how they get bull out of Bawala. Sometimes you see it referred to as Heshvan or Heshvan, but that word is not really found in the Bible anywhere. So we'll just stick with bull or Bawala. But the main point of this verse, I believe, is how the temple was finished in this eighth month. Understanding that the first temple was a living parable for the third temple. This, I believe, will be significant in its relationship to the eighth month. We'll cover in another video how the first temple's construction was started in a sabbatical year. It was actually a sabbatical year that preceded the Jubilee year, which is really interesting when we think about the year 2023, which will be a sabbatical year preceding a Jubilee year. 
gets even more interesting when we think about how the construction of the second temple started during a sabbatical year. But like I said, we'll cover that more in a future video. The next verse that mentions the eighth month is in Zechariah chapter one and verse one, where it says in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Ido, the prophet saying, the Lord has been sore displeased with your fathers. The second year of King Darius was also a sabbatical year. And like I said, that's when they started to construct the second temple or when work started to be continued after a long break, they actually started construction on the second temple again in the sabbatical year. But this verse over here is not really talking about the second temple as much as it is talking about how he says he is displeased with our forefathers. Like what we see down there in verse six, where it says, but my word and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so has he dealt with us. And this is an important note, even in our own times, that what we're dealing with, as far as our understanding of the commandments and the statutes is the result of the actions of our forefathers who abandoned the truth many, many years ago. So many of us living in today's time, wondering what's wrong with the way we live our lives. Well, it was our forefathers that abandoned the truth, like I said, a long time ago, and we're just living in the result of it here today. But anyway, the next time we see the eighth month being talked about is in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 32 and 33. Verse 32 says, And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, or on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. Looking back at verse 27, we see why Jeroboam did this. Jeroboam is the one who is responsible for leading the other 10 tribes away. You've heard of the lost 10 tribes of Israel. They got lost because they followed Jeroboam and ended up intermarrying into the Babylonian nations where they lost their identity. Unlike the other two tribes who also went into Babylon, refused to marry the Babylonian women. So after the exile, they came out still with their identity. Well, the other 10 tribes completely mixed in. And that's the reason why today you can't really tell who bloodline Israel is. The other 10 tribes just completely mixed themselves all together. And to this day, unless you do DNA, you can't tell who they are. That brings me to another point that I was going to make a little later on in the video. I can make it now how through the act of the resurrection of the flesh or reincarnation, as some people call it, our father has brought many of these people back with different identities like we learn over in the great book of true life in teaching 183. In other words, anybody can be anybody in these days. For example, how you hear about people talking about Esau and they'll say that a particular race is the race of Esau. We, we can't do that because of the resurrection of the flesh. Esau and Jacob were actually twin brothers. But the main difference between Esau and Jacob is that Jacob went back to the house of Abraham and learned the law, whereas Esau refused to learn the law. So when you're trying to figure out who is Esau in today's time, this would be ministers of the faith, preachers and teachers who don't follow the law, who don't teach the law, even though they look like Jacob behind the pulpit, dressed in priestly garments, they're not actually teaching what the scripture says. So in other words, Esau was yet another living parable. But that goes for the 10 tribes as well. Like we're going to see here when we're talking about Dan. 
and we're going to talk about who Dan is today and why they will still yet be cut off from the 144,000 and will not be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. You can't really go by bloodlines and what people look like in this time. You have to go by behaviors, belief systems, and how they treat the law. And looking back over here in Judges chapter 18 and verse 30, where it talks about Dan in its relationship to what Jeroboam had done, it says, And the children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, a son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan unto the day of the captivity of the land. So Dan was the main tribe that abandoned the Lord, the feast days, and started worshiping the golden calf. You see, in chapter 12 and verse 27, the reason why Jeroboam did it, it says, If this people go to sacrifice in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, then shall the heart of the people turn again unto their Lord and unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So here is why Jeroboam set up the golden calf in Dan was to prevent them from actually serving the Lord in Jerusalem. He said that if they actually went into Jerusalem to keep the proper feast days, they would turn to the Lord and start serving the Lord. And then Jeroboam would be killed. So is that the reason why so many preachers today take our focus off of the feast days and keep us serving pagan holidays, which is a representation of the golden calf? I believe so. Maybe they're not so afraid of being killed as they were back in the old days. Now they're more worried about losing their congregations, which will definitely happen when people start to keep the proper feast days. That's actually what they're all about is keeping our focus on our Heavenly Father. So you have these ministers here today who are acting like Jeroboam trying their best to distract their congregations and keep them blind to the proper feast days. But anyway, coming back over here to chapter 12, verse 28 says, Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And that's real funny when you think about these ministers who try to make you forget about the Lord's feast. That's one of the first things they'll say is that it's too hard or that it's too far or that we don't know how to do it or any kind of excuse keeping people from following the proper feast days all while they promote the feast days of the Gentiles. Then notice in verse 29, it says, and he set up one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. Now, there's no tribe called Bethel. It was just a small town within the tribe of Ephraim or something like that. You heard of Bethel and I, but he also set up one of these golden calves in Dan. Then look at verse 30. It says, and this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. So even though he set up two golden calves, the people actually went to worship in Dan. And then over here in Amos chapter eight, verse 14 says that they swear by the sin of Samaria and say, thy God, O Dan liveth and the manner of Bathsheba liveth. Even they shall fall and never rise again. So the people were worshiping the golden calf in Dan. Jumping over here to chapter 13 out of first Kings, we can see what happened to the altar that he set up in Bethel and why the people didn't continue to worship there. When we read that there in verse three, which says, and he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. So you have Jeroboam who is standing here at the altar there in Bethel. And you have this particular prophet who has just placed a curse on this particular altar. But anyway, verse four says, and it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, 
which had carried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. So this man of God placed this curse on the altar while Jeroboam was standing there. And Jeroboam pointed at him and said, Y'all kill that dude. And while he was pointing, his hand dried up as a sign. And just like the man of God has said, we see there in verse five, the altar was also rent and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. So the altar there in Bethel was destroyed. And you could imagine after the people saw this sign that they didn't want to worship there in Bethel anymore. And when you look and try to find pictures of the altar in Bethel, you can't find anything. But when you look for the altar in Dan, you see that even till today is still yet complete. All is missing is the golden calf, which was probably stolen for its gold. So that altar in Dan could actually be still there today. I mean, some of these pictures look really recent, even taken in color, which to me would suggest that people are still yet worshiping the golden calf there in Dan. But anyway, when we look further down in chapter 13 of first Kings, verse 33 says, after this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people, priest of the high places, whosoever would, he consecrated him and he became one of the priests in the high places. So even though, his arm has shriveled up and the altar in Bethel was destroyed from beneath him. He actually continued on going on to create priests who weren't Levi's or anybody, just the common man. He made priests that would teach other people to worship the golden calf as he instructed and he put them over the altars. But the thing about it, the only place that he could have done this was in the tribe of Dan. Again, because the altar in Bethel had been destroyed and they were still worshiping the golden calf there in Dan. Well, look at verse 34. It says, and this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. So this, I believe, is why Dan is not included in the 144,000. In fact, when we come over to Second Chronicles, where we are given an account of the lineages there of the 12 tribes of Jacob. We see already by the time we get to first Chronicles in chapter six, the entire tribe of Dan is missing. It gives an account all the way back there, starting in chapter four with the descendants of Judah. And it continues all the way through to chapter nine, but there's no mention of Dan anywhere. So they were already cut off, cut off for worshiping the golden calf. And you see that they remained cut off even to this day, where Revelation chapter seven excludes them from the 144,000. The tribe of Dan is not listed in there anywhere. So what this is telling us is those who are yet still worshiping the golden calf Refusing to return to spiritual Jerusalem or New Jerusalem to worship our father at his proper feast days. These people will be excluded from the 144,000. They, they won't be included. They actually won't get to go over. And it makes sense in light of verse nine in chapter seven, which says that the ones who are allowed to go over into the kingdom of heaven will have palm branches in their hands. The palm branches are part of the celebration in the seventh month. We rejoice with these palm branches during the Feast of Tabernacles, like you see there in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 40. But since Dan refused to go to the Feast of Tabernacles, they won't be a part of that multitude that no man can number. And they tend to get a little bit lonely. That's why they actually try to prevent you 
from keeping the feasts in the seventh month or the feasts in the first month is because they want you to be cut off just like they are. It's kind of like they think it's a popularity contest where if the majority of them start to worship the golden calf, our father in heaven, hallowed be his name, would change his mind. Well, that's not going to be the case. And Revelation chapter seven is proof of that when we see that entire tribe completely excluded from the 144,000 and probably the multitude that no man can number as well as the entire kingdom of heaven. And that's probably why when and if you tune into their channels, all they talk about is being supernaturally removed from the planet altogether because they've chosen to worship the golden calf and not follow the feast of the Lord. They have no part in the kingdom of heaven whatsoever. So we got to be careful who we listen to. If the minister you're supporting is not teaching you about feast days and are talking about holidays, they're probably of the spiritual tribe of Dan and you could be too. So Let's get ready for Hanukkah, which comes up in the ninth month. And never mind for these other pagan holidays. They're just not worth it. So if you're interested in our father's feast days, when they are and when we're supposed to be doing them, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Father willing, we'll be getting you ready for Hanukkah, telling you when it is and what we're supposed to be doing. Because that too is a feast day when we will have the palm branches in our hands ensuring that we will be counted in that number if you got anything out of this video go ahead and hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and shalawama